All right, welcome everyone. We're two minutes late. I apologize. <laughs> I see some comments are all already rolling in asking to start. We were uh, just getting the victim prepared. Today is a good episode. We're going to build Melina OS from scratch, from source for a new device. Um, you all know me, David Tischler, developer advocate here at Bellina. On my, nope, that side <laughs> is Mark, another of our usual suspects. Mark, you want to say hello? Exactly. Hey, how are you doing? I'm Mark, developer advocate at Bellina yeah. as well. And we've got a new friend below us here, Daniel. Do you hello. want to say hello and give a quick intro? Hello, yes. Uh, so I'm a rare guest here. I'm usually uh, just uh, watching. Uh, so my name's Daniel. I'm with the customer success uh, team uh, here at Balina. Um, the main reason I'm here is uh, we've had a couple of customers recently um, that were interested in uh, building their own uh, Balina OS for their boards. Uh, we do support um, a large number of boards. It's about 60 um, just out the box. But there are customers that have specific hardware requirements. There could be a chip on the board they chose. Uh, that doesn't exist on any of the boards that we support, and they still want to uh, build the project using uh, Balina. So one of the paths, obviously, is uh, to build your operating system. Uh, we do publish instructions for that. So we have open source um, repositories um, to be used, um, and um, here is our other attempt, uh, or another attempt, to just make customers' life easier if they want to do it. And that's why we're having this uh, this episode to to actually do it live and show that um, it's not that scary. Well, it's a little bit scary. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. We have the whole thing documented, and um, we're going to go through it uh, in the course of this hour. Fair warning: my laptop is not super fast, so building Bellina OS from source does take normally a couple of hours on a standard machine. I think, however, I can get it done easily within 24 hours, so you might want to fill up your waters. We're going to be here a while. Maybe get a snack ready. Uh, yeah, Mark, you're, it looks like you're prepared. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, you might want to clear your calendar for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I see the comments are already rolling in. Um, but yeah, you know, jokes aside, it does take a while to build from source. So um, obviously, I've got a, a backup plan as well. Um, but Daniel, so you got a happy hour, me. not a release party. <laughs> happy, right? happy. Yeah, it's a happy hour, not a release party. Or if it was a release party, we could actually get it done. Um, but. Um, Thanks, Daniel. You covered um, pretty much the entire background there of what we're going to do, which is going to be building Bellina OS from source, which is hosted in GitHub for a new device type. I'll show you that device type in just a moment. But, you know, like you said, Daniel, we have 60-ish boards that are supported at the moment, but for any of you that are familiar in the ARM ecosystem, there's a lot more boards out there than that. So when customers come and ask about a certain device type, then we have the capability or a methodology in place to bring up new boards. And quite honestly, that's the same process we follow when we add new boards. So before we get into that, we need to play a little round of what's on your desk. Yeah, exactly. Mark. Daniel was super excited about that. Uh, I don't know if he wanted to sing the song, the jingle of what's on your desk. Daniel said he was hoping to sing. I remember him saying that, but you know, I think he has laryngitis today, so I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. In exchange, I uh, he's, his his voice uh, was hurting a little bit today, so we'll see if he can do it. If not, uh, he offered some bribes for further down the road, so we'll see. So let me play the the jingle, the Chris one. Unless you want to uh, you want to sing, Daniel. Unless he wants what to do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's get beautiful, Chris. Yep, get him queued up. What's on your desk? Okay. <laughs> These comments rolling in already. 
<laughs> got rum and snacks, built a thread ripper, then come here. Oh boy. Daniel, All right. You something on your desk. Yeah, Daniel, what do you have um, on your desk? Actually, yeah, that's one you wouldn't expect to see, but I'll tell you why. So I've got a crystal ball, crystal ball, which is, uh, yeah, crystal ball, you know, like uh, one used for, uh, you know, stock exchange trading. You just look into this and it tells you where to invest. But, um, what? What's so, that? Actually, no. Wait, 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 hold on, I have some questions. Hang yeah. on a minute, I gotta ask that some questions. <laughs> it's a lens ball, you use it to... But what is a lens ball? To, 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 to what something are? Um, so I've got a fin on my desk, so because I often play with the fin and um, it's the board we support and it's our board, obviously. And I used the the crystal ball or the uh, the lens ball to actually take some photos of it the other day, and I just edited them today. So let me just show you one. I'm going to show you on my tablet because screen sharing that's going to probably break my laptop. But uh, yeah, this is one of those photos. Oh, beautiful. You see it? Yeah. Whoa. And there's uh, another one, black and white. There you go. Wow. Oh man. You want to Finn, copy? It's Finn yeah. art. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's a new new uh, branch of photography. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's actually a selfie. You can see me in the middle with the uh, holding the camera. Yeah. So uh, they, yeah, I see that. Okay. Paul is asking if they sell one in a bowling ball size, and I definitely <laughs> need to ask. <laughs> Carl, Carlo says he needs it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Will my build succeed? Yeah, exactly, Sahaj. Um, Actually, I judge you. I don't have a question before. Yeah. The what's on, said, your what's wrist? on your wrist? Daniel, what is on your wrist? Oh, on kind of my little... wrist. Yeah, there's uh, nothing interesting here. This is uh, just the uh, sports watch. So it's a Garmin Phoenix 3 or something. So fairly old. It's like three or four years old, but they're relatively reliable. So uh, yeah, I just keep wearing it as a daytime watch as well because uh, the battery life is pretty cool. That's awesome. Thank you for the sharing. All right. Anything else on the desk or do we want to get into some hacking? Uh, nothing interesting, to be honest. Yeah, just a few tools, keys, headphones. Yeah, those are all good stuff. I only have a new router on my desk, so I think that's so. <laughs> finally, I have fiber at home after oh, being nice. like <clears throat> last three weeks on on my phone connection. But yeah, I think we can get into your table, David. If that's okay, okay for well, you. that's exactly what is on my desk. Is a what? victim ready for surgery? Now, the patient <laughs> is prepared. Uh, in fact, I still have the green sticker that it came with that says it passed uh, QA from the factory. We'll see if that's true or not. <laughs> but uh, the victim... What, what does is, it mean, pass six? I don't know. I have no idea. That's what it came with. <laughs> uh, let me switch my camera. Maybe back. anyone in the audience knows. Yeah, does anybody know what pass six? Great. I guess maybe yeah. inspection station six and the QA pass. So, so it... So maybe you, you already think, explained... So David, you already explained what Celebrity Computer Board in the last yeah. episode, but maybe I'm, give us a, a bit of context. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do that. So let me come back real quick onto this camera because I've got the box in front of me as well. So Daniel, you know, like you were saying, when a customer comes to us and says, hey, I want to support a certain type of a board. Um, one of the first things you have to do is start to research, okay, well, what is the actual hardware on this board? So we can actually start this story. <laughs> QA passed, no magic smoke escaped. <laughs> Sahaj is correct. Um, so you start the story actually rewinding a little bit, which is from a very high level. For those of you who are familiar, maybe have like built your own computer or looked inside of a computer at least you know you've got a motherboard you have a cpu which is the processor you have memory and you have hard drives that are attached via cables to it um you got the usb ports and some other stuff um some other peripherals all attached and when you put it all together and you go to load windows or linux or i mean even a mac for that matter um internally you know is more or less the same they have what's called a BIOS, or nowadays UEFI, but same sort of concept as a BIOS. And in that BIOS is where you can do some tweaking and configuring of the hardware, but it 
automatically detects what is the processor that is installed, how much memory is installed, what drives are detected. It literally just queries across the wires to see, okay, I have two hard drives. One is X gigabytes and the other is Y gigabytes. And all said and done, after that, it takes that information and it passes it on through to the operating system. So Windows says, okay, great. I've got this core i7 processor. I've got 16 gigs of RAM. I've got two hard drives, et cetera, et cetera. And Windows just goes on its merry way, says, I know what the hardware is. Thank you for providing it to me. I'll go ahead and make use of it. Uh, Linux, same thing. Over in the single board computer or ARM world, as the case may be, there is no such thing as that UEFI BIOS, at least in the small devices. There are some big servers that provide it and we'll just sort of let those be for the moment. But in the single board computer world, you have to actually tell Linux exactly what hardware exists. So let me switch the camera back and we'll do a quick, um, quick overview of this board in particular. But the point is, you have to tell Linux that it has this exact processor, not an H2, not an H5. This is an all winner H3. You have to tell Linux that it has one gig of memory, not the two gig variant because they make this board in a two gig variant, but I happen to purchase the one gig variant. So there's the memory. And you have available these USB ports, this ethernet, this HDMI port, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that happens in what's called a device tree. And it's it comes rolled into some firmware by the name of U-Boot. And we'll get into that in a moment as well. But the point is, is there's no, um, <laughs> there's no magic sauce underneath the hood that tells the operating system all of that. You have to provide it. So we'll take a quick glance at a device tree in a moment, what it looks like. But the point here is that when you want to support a new board, you have to know exactly what hardware is on it. So Daniel, when a customer comes to you, is that, I assume that is the first thing that you're then going to look at is what is the SOC, the system on chip, a CPU essentially, and do we have some Yocto layer? We'll cover Yocto in just a moment. But basically, I, I assume it's you take a glance at the hardware and see if it's something that we could at least fundamentally work with. Is that sort of correct? Yes, yes, and we have we have dedicated team at Palina to 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 always give us answers if we if we um, are not uh, sure. And customers, when they need uh, the device, they sometimes are not aware that there might be um, um, some kinds of limitations as to what we can use, and yeah. they're not necessarily aware what it is that we're looking for to be able to quickly tell yes, uh, this could work with um, with Palina OS or or not. And also, you know, it it varies because. Obviously, some hardware vendors, they will obviously already have uh, Yocto support for their boards, but some of them won't, and those boards will be the more complex cases, I would say. But yes, they will. They, these will be the things we'll be uh, assessing first. Gotcha. Perfect. And so let's transition then from there to, you said, or we both said, the term Yocto. Now, on a Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi Foundation provides Raspbian, or I think they're now calling it Raspberry Pi OS, fine. NVIDIA provides an Ubuntu distribution that they call Jetpack, fine. But we don't actually use either of those on our devices or any of the other 58 devices. We build our own OS, which is what we're gonna do in a moment, called Belina OS, and it's based upon Yocto Linux, which is our upstream source that we pull from. And Yocto Linux is a bit different in that it's a minimal operating system. It is specifically made for embedded devices. It does not have a lot of the features and functionality that you would expect from Jetpack or 
Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS. It is a cut down, small, lightweight OS on purpose. And so that's what we use because these are small IoT devices that we're targeting and building for. So Yocto is the source. We add some customizations in order to interact with Bellina Cloud and that is called Bellina OS. So let me bring up screen share at this point. And because Yocto is open source and we're big fans of open source, Bellina OS is also open source. Let's, where is, there we go, bring that in. Okay, so Bellina OS lives in GitHub. And we already mentioned that we have about 60 odd, 60 some devices that we support. So if you come into here, you can take a look around and you can see all of our builds for our various devices. So here's the Bellina Jetson, here's the Bellina Raspberry Pi repo, there's an Intel repo, here's an Asus Tinkerboard. Uh, the Gate IMX8, Daniel, correct me, I think that might be a CompuLab device. Uh, I can't remember the vendor on it. Um, I don't remember. Exactly. Yeah, we'd have to look it up. But um, Verisite, that is a, uh, Verisite I think might be a, uh, Verisite, no, is the vendor. The MX8 is the board. Um, so, you know, you have to know a little bit about what you're looking for, certainly, but they're all in here. So here's the Beagle Bone. Um, FSL Arm is for Freescale boards. Here's the Coral board by Google. Uh, Nano PCT4. So point being, you then start to explore what hardware and boards do we already support. And I mentioned earlier this victim on my desk here has an all winner H3 processor on it. One of our repos, I didn't see it on page one there, and perhaps it needs to get an update to get bumped up to the top of the list, but is Bellina all winner. So we have a repo already made for all winner devices. Perfect. In it, I can see we support a Banana Pi M1, a Neo Air, an Orange Pi Lite, an Orange Pi 1, an Orange Pi 0. So these are all devices, whether it's a Banana Pi, an Orange Pi, or some other Pi, um, that have an all-winner processor on them. And this repo states that it supports H3 devices. So when I started to think about this episode, I thought, all right, well, if we already support H3 devices, I'll just grab something with an H3 on it. <laughs> Kyle's gonna PR all winner. Good, get that bump up to the top of the list, Kyle. Um, it's on page one. So I started looking around and I found this board here that we showed already, ready for surgery. Libre computer, all H3 CCH3, one gigabyte, it's called the Tritium, okay. Looks pretty good, $20. I thought, sure, let's give it a shot. The vendor has a website devoted to the board. Um, you know, they have some uh, overview of, of what it is. It's compatible form factor with a Pi 2 or 3. Um, comes in 32 or 64 bit variants. Uh, HDMI 1.4 with up to 4K video output. So that's kind of nice. If you're looking for something in the Pi 2 or 3 form factor, but actually need 4K HDMI, you know, this might be a good fit. Um, and so I thought, sure, let's give it a shot. So let's do that. Um, before I get into... David, we have some questions. That's what chat. I was going to say. I, I before I get into this... Lot. Let's uh, take a look. Is helping, but yeah, do you want to? Yeah, let's invest five minutes to take a look. Okay? I'm gonna put them on the on the. Yeah, on bring the them up. Bring them up. Yeah. I'm a little bit with my VM running here. I lose sight of chat. What no do we problem. have? Uh, let me try to get the first question. So we we got. Pop, 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 pop. Um, so we had Paul asking anyone in the chat using any robotics is balena i have a robot tank running python and i'm trying to figure out how to get balena in it um, and, and later he mentioned that it uses a pi with ls uh, to motor launch controller. rockets wow <laughs> we definitely need a rocket powered balena <laughs> absolutely so um that, 
Okay, Paul. So that's a um, well, that's a conversation all in itself. That'll take the next thirty-eight minutes of this live stream. Um, we can go down that road, but if we're assuming this is a big assumption, if we are assuming that you're running Ross robot operating system on that. Um, there is a sample repo from a buddy of ours in the community, Keenan Johnson. Um, I'll grab the link at some point, maybe once the build starts running, um, and, and drop that in. We do have a sample Ross repo. Um, you would then have to wedge in your Ross, um, I forget what the term that they call them are, not sketches, those are Arduinos, um, subscribers uh get it here I, yeah i can't remember the um but uh you'd have to wedge those in then and bring it up in that manner so this might be better as a four i don't even know if the four i don't know if anyone in our community on the forums would really be able to guide it um i'd say you can post it on the forums but i'm a little concerned that our community might not know the answer um Raspi OS with a Python script on boot with a camera stream too. Uh, if it's simply a Python script, that might in fact be easier. Um, I'll tell you what, Paul, shoot me an email, david at bellina.io. I'm going to have to devote some brain power to it. Or oh, David, maybe a message on the forums. forums yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? To help if you. it's a, a Python script, the community can assist with absolutely yeah. and, and, we, it in and the we forums. It, I mean, yeah for yep yep so that's the best place for it yeah mm -hmm. I think that's... if it was ross based i would be concerned that our community may not have enough experience there um hopefully someday we're, we're at that point but if it's python based our community can can assist with that no problem all, all right. right what else do we have sitting in we here have in a the question from sahash if there is a minimum Linux version requirement for Valena OS. Oh boy. All right. Well, Sahaj, I have a feeling you know the answer to this, but you're <laughs> just testing me. And what if my SBC vendor provides a 3.4 kernel board support package and the board is not upstreamed? Yeah, you might be out of luck in this case. Or alternatively, you might be able to find some Yocto layers um, that support the board, even if it is not upstream mainline Linux. So it gets a little bit tricky here, and we'll start in a, in a few minutes, we'll take a look at those layers. They may or may not exist. And so, yes, that is a good starting point and a good talking point here in that you can't always choose a device at total random. We're gonna do, I'm gonna show you right now in just a moment, a little bit of the research that goes into, can Belina run on the device? And the very first thing we're gonna do, uh, <laughs> he wasn't testing. Ah. All right, so that's a perfect transition point. Mark, were there any other questions? Because that's a good hop off point. I mean, it's OK. Mithun was just mentioning that everything that you do on Raspberry, I mean, this is maybe an answer for Paul. Yeah, for Paul, it's, yep. Uh, you can write on Palina. Um, but to forward to see that Paul's um, yeah, yeah. time project yeah, on the yeah. forums to help. Yeah. Him. And Sahaj is wondering if there's Bolinux. Bolina specific stuff requires a minimum Linux API level. Kyle, if you're still in the comments, I might need you. Or if Alex G is uh, watching, I might need you to uh, grab that one. I'm going to take a look, though, at doing our very first thing, which is this. We are going to clone this repo. We need this locally. So it clone. Bring that down. Once we have it, oops, 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 I've already made a mistake. Hang on, rm dash rf, Belina all winner. Get that back out of here. So we forgot. So David, you go have ahead, a go ahead. So you have a virtual, so just to get the context, you have a virtual machine, right? And yeah. You're gonna go, uh, 
half hour. I am Hello. in an Ubuntu VM that I'm using okay. for development purposes. We need these sub modules as well. So yes, I'm in an Ubuntu virtual machine. Um, and very first thing when building from source is to get the source. So I want that Bolina all winner repo. Let's bring that down to my VM. Now, everyone, make sure you start to say your prayers here because we're getting going. The demo gods. The demo gods. I'm really sad that we lose a lot of we lost a lot of animations here on uh, the animations on are screen. gone. Where did yeah. they go? Well, we got we still got Travolta. That's good. We only have this one. <laughs> yeah, that's our favorite one. As long as that one's there. <laughs> All right. How are we looking here? We should be just about done. Yeah, feel free to keep yeah. asking questions. Yeah, I was just going to say time. we're going to have some we're going to have some downtime, I think, as this goes. Let's see. This shouldn't take too much longer. All right, perfect. Nope, it's here. Now, I have my test from the other day, but that test failed. So let's hope that this one goes a little <laughs> Let's hope this one goes better. All right, first thing first, we now have that repo. I can see right away we need, in order to tell our build script what we're actually building, one of these .coffee files. Let's do this. I'm going to make a copy of an existing one. I'm just grabbing at random the orange pie plus two .coffee. I'm going to build for, I'll call it a Libre CC because that is what they call the board. That's the name of the board. And now I need to open it up and edit it. Again, we've already got boards with this processor that are supported. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and type all of this manually. I'm literally going to come through here and call it the Libre CC. Oops, Libre hyphen CC. It is an ARM V7 processor. We already know that it is the same processor that is included on the Orange Pi, Nano Pi, Banana Pi. I'm going to alter these endpoints just so that this build does complete properly. And though I'm not going to do documentation right now, I'm just going to get these in place. This coffee file basically tells our Yocto build script everything it needs to know about the board and where uh, or and what to build. The little note to make here, image, resin image flasher. I'm going to erase the flasher. A flasher image builds an SD card that when you pop it into a board will flash the OS to an onboard EMMC. Devices that have onboard storage, you can build a flasher for. This device does not have onboard storage. It boots from an SD card. So I'm going to remove flasher. I don't want to build a flasher image to call it LibreCC. That'll be, you can see it's called Deploy Artifact. This is literally the name of the file that is going to get kicked out at the end. And I think that should be good. Do you see any more references to Orange Pie anywhere? I do not. Let's see if that is good. Now, all right. Our builder has the information to go through the build, but we're not ready quite yet. Yocto consists of what are called layers. Layers consist of recipes. Pokey, Meta Sunsi, Sunchi, Meta Rust, Meta Open Embedded, 
Metabolina are all layers that we pulled down as part of that Git clone. I shouldn't have to touch any of these. Let's hope. Metabolina hyphen all winner is where I want to do some work. In here, these subfolders are basically the points that, uh, or I should say the files. We'll take another look. Let's go one further down. The recipes that um, control what gets built. Uh oh, nothing in you. Oh, there it is. Um, I know a couple of things right away. There's also this conf directory, which contains information about the boards themselves. Here we have the three boards that are already supported in these machine configuration files. Same as before. Let's copy and paste one of them, rename it. We know that we named it Libre-CC. Eh, try that again. And take a look at it. Okay, so here's the machine configuration. Orange Pi plus two, not anymore. Now it's a Libre-CC. Come over here. Uh, it is bringing in a Sun 8i, which is a code name for that H3 processor that we were talking about. And it's going to build a kernel device tree of a Sun 8i H3 Orange Pi Plus. Well, that's not going to work. And a U-boot machine for an Orange Pi Plus default configuration. Well, that's not going to work either. So what do we need to name these? Great question. I have no idea. So we're going to go find out what they are called. In the meantime, anything coming in uh, in questions over there? No, it's it's okay, uh, I guess. Um, there are some good uh, tips. Um, yeah, and okay. Sahash answering as well about the coffee file extension. All and right. I are saying thank you for making this Yocto uh, tutorial. Yeah, he was expecting things long time ago. Perfect. All right. So this board happens to have mainline support, which is sort of what Sahaj was referring to earlier. So I'm just going to go take a quick peek at the kernel. I'm going to look in mainline. I'm just going to hit browse and take a look at the files. And the device tree is a description of all of the hardware that the board has. It's an ARM processor. In configs, nope, not configs, go back. Boot, DTS, are all of the boards that the mainline Linux kernel supports. And I'm gonna take a look for one of two places. L for Libre. Nope, nothing there. Most of them are named by the SOC, which is the CPU. O maps are from TI. QCOM for Qualcomm boards. You can see here's a Dragon Board DTS. A lot of Qualcomms. Uh, our K's are rock chips. And when we get down into the S's, I'm hoping we're going to find, oh, STM32MP1s. Here come the Suns. The Sun XI's are the all winner devices. Sun 8i hyphen H3 hyphen Libre Tech hyphen all H3 CC dot DTS. Nice. Jackpot. You nailed it. I got lucky. All right. <laughs> that is what we want. All right, not lucky. I knew it was there. But real quickly, let's take a look at the file just so you can see what a device tree looks like. Ah, actually, it's bringing in a DTSI, which is a DTS include file. Okay, fine. We'll go look at that one instead. 
Uh, where is that? What was the name of it that it was bringing in? H3 DTSI. Gotcha. Okay. This is the raw code that tells, remember, like I said, these are the CPUs you have. There are four of them. These are interfaces on the SOC, video, thermal zones. Don't go over this temperature or you will fry yourself, et cetera, et cetera. MMC is the SD card. Go on and on. You have to literally define all of this stuff. If you're adding support for a new device, you need to know what you're doing and you're going to be doing some typing. But in this case, we're going to use one that somebody in the open source community has already provided for us. Thank you for that. <laughs> now, U-Boot. U-Boot is that firmware that brings the board up before we even get to the Linux kernel. U-Boot, we need to do the same thing. Let's go to the U-Boot. I think they are in if I remember, but we'll just go uh, mainline source and hopefully, uh, yeah, gitlab.denx.de. They are the custodian of U-Boot. And same thing for them. We need to go to arch arm DTS, and there are going to be a lot of boards that they support. You know what I'm going to actually do, though, is this way, because this page takes forever to render. And I see I had the error come up already. Arm, DTS, Osmos, David's incredible experience with this stuff. Osmos, is that a word? Sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, what did you learn these? Uh, uh, Sahaj. I learned it from Sahaj. Where did he <laughs> learn it? <laughs> exactly. Um, Sahaj, where did you learn this? Yeah, who knows? H3 hyphen. Uh, let's see. Libre Tech. There it is. Cool. All right. So actually, I can't come. Why can't I copy paste on that? I'm trying to move it. No problem. We're going to need that. Now that I think about it, though, uh-oh, uh-oh, copy that. Um, looking at this, though, it's actually they're looking at the default configuration, so we're in the wrong spot. We're going to need this in a moment. Don't forget that. But back to uh, configs, maybe, or is it in board? No, nope, looks like it might be in here. No, wait a minute. Yeah, that's capitalized. So, all right, back to the top. We're going to do the same thing. Find file, uboot hyphen slash configs. Hold on. Configs slash Libre, maybe? Oh, yep. All right. And... Libre, all, H3, CC, H3, def config. That looks good. Let's nice. grab that. And that's already okay. there? That's fine? That's or already or there. Now? Thanks okay. to the open source community. Somebody already created it and merged it in. OK, we're good. That file is done. Next, so now we have a machine configuration. The two other pieces I really need to be worried about, though, are the kernel recipe and the U-boot recipe. So we got to go hunting. We've got to go find them. Okay, recipes kernel. Do you hunt? Probably a good. Probably a good place to look. Maybe, maybe not. Is there anything in here? Is it just taking a while? Hmm. I would have thought so, but there we go. Um, my VM is clearly struggling. Let's close a couple tabs that we don't need. By the way, Mark, if you can grab this URL, I want to close this one out. But 
Um, if you do a yeah, search sure. real quick for our documentation on building Bellina OS from source, sure. all of this is documented. Everything I'm going through right here is simply in our docs. Um, all right, so Linux mainline B, B append. BB stands for bit bake. It is the terminology that's used for the recipe. I want to take a quick glance at it and see if we're doing anything here that requires making any modifications. I see some appending for the various boards. I don't see anything here referring to the kernel itself. Um, so that's good. So we can close this out. It looks like the kernel. What I was looking for in here was going to be anything specific to does the kernel come from or require um, or are we designating which kernel to build against? But because it's mainline, I don't see anything in here that is absolutely positively tied to the orange pie, nano pie, or banana pie that we were uh, talking about earlier. There are additional fix-ups that we could make, additional features. I can see this one right here is some power functionality. Um, I can see Wi-Fi is being pulled in as append. Append means add to a recipe. Um, this Libre board doesn't actually have Wi-Fi, so I'm not going to worry about this for the moment. Let's go ahead and close. Does it have Wi-Fi? No, board. it does okay. not. Does have have to use have to use Ethernet on that board. Okay, maybe that explains why it's so cheap, right? Yeah, it could be. There is no Wi-Fi included on it. So it's uh, Ethernet only. I mean, you could add a USB Wi-Fi dongle, of course, but um, BSP. Board support package <coughs> is where U-Boot is going to live. And let's see if there's any U-Boot append here that we need to take a look at. Nope, nothing in here that is absolutely positively 100% tied to the... I feel that's a practical exam and Daniel is scoring him on his knowledge. Yeah, Daniel's getting ready to chime in at any moment with you're doing this wrong. <laughs> Daniel's ready to say, no, you're going about it incorrectly. Um, all right, I don't see anything in there. Last place I'm going to check, though, is recipes core. And recipes core images is what is actually going to build the artifact at the end of the day. And here we have very specific for each board target. I can see the Orange Pi Plus 2, the Orange Pi 1, the Light, the Zero, the Neo Air is in here. Interesting that I don't see that Banana Pi, but that's maybe not fully supported quite yet. No problem. I'm going to copy that plus two that I've been essentially stealing from the whole time here. And I'm going to append to this recipe for the Libre CC a bootloader that needs to get written to the image. You boot. <laughs> we know that. And some partitioning that needs to be done. And this partitioning is what actually takes our build artifacts that are about to start and will run for the next 23 hours or so. <laughs> and here's where we need the output from. I should have left that tab open. Um, all right. At the end of the compilation process, the artifacts that are going to get created are going to be, in this case, the Libre, um, the Libre CC device tree. Now, let's undo those tabs because we need not that one. 
Not that one. Not that the, one. The GitLab, right? The GitLab from U-Boot. You got it. And it wasn't actually this one. It was the one that we found the first time and determined that's not what I need here. It was this one, arch arm. I think we said boot. No, we didn't. Did we say DTS? We sure did. Libre. H3. All. Oh, here we go. This is the one that I just want to copy paste because that is the file name that's going to get kicked out after the fact. We know that that is about to be built to back out and it's a dot DTB. A DTS is not compiled. A DTB is compiled. And I hear some landscaping going on outside my window. So hopefully that's not coming through to you guys. And if it is, well, then I apologize. Okay. And you boot with Sunsea can stay. Now, the last thing here, command, the image command, resin image append. Come back, copy the Libre CC, and we are almost done. And then it's time to say another prayer. Okay, that should be it. I think we have all of the artifacts in place now for a mainline supported board that we graciously borrowed from an orange pie because that's already supported. Why type all of this and recreate all of this? That doesn't make any sense. So let's close that out. Now I'm gonna close my tabs back out free up some memory and it's time to fire off a build job so we did our git clone we hacked up all of our files that we needed to let's go into that directory and it's time to build we have a very handy build script I shouldn't have closed that tab. And in fact, I closed the whole browser <laughs> called Barry's, B-A-R-Y-S, that um, will build the whole thing for us, start to finish, end to end. No, nope, not that tab. Let's come over here. And how are we doing on time? We got 10 minutes to spare. All right, perfect. We're right on target. Wow. Everything's synchronized. Yeah, today we didn't yeah. play a lot with what's on your desk. So. No, we kept it quick. Here's what I want right here is this, and we'll then explain it. All right. In a directory below me, Belina Yocto scripts, there is a file called berries, which is a bash script. It takes a couple of arguments. Dash K is for continuing on in case of any errors to keep on churning through the scripts. Dash D is for development. I'm building a development image because I want to have my UART serial console exposed and the ability to SSH to the device afterwards. And dash M is what machine are you building for? We created out of thin air a Libre CC so let's build for that. If I got that coffee file that we started with correct, it will churn through them. If not, we're gonna get an error, but I think I got it. Okay. And it's now gonna start parsing all of the recipes, which are literally thousands of individual recipes. 
the recipes that are in these folders are everything that is needed for every single package. Let's take a look in Pokey, Meta. Um, uh, where would be a good place now? Kyle, if you're still on, I'm trying to think. Wait, Meta Pokey? No, nope, 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 nope. Where all of the individual packages live. Oh, here they are. So here's everything. Gzip, built from source. Grep, literally the grep command. Bash, all of the IP tables for networking. Um, IP utils. So every single package that makes up a Linux distro that you totally take for granted in Raspbian, Ubuntu, Jetpack, whatever, any Linux distro that includes basic functionality. Look, here's wget, here's time, <laughs> like everything, uh, Perl. So everything has to be built, well, downloaded, compiled, packaged. So at the end of this process, right now we're still only parsing. <laughs> it's then gonna go through the downloads and the compiles. Like I say, it will literally take this VM a good 12 to 24 hours. Um, but at the end, we are gonna get a .img file. That .img file is what you flash to the SD card, plug into the board, and hopefully it works. Any so you have that IMG file? You have it? You already have it? No. Why would I have that? No. We're going to wait twenty three ah, hours. Okay. I thought this was the. Is this not the twenty four hour stream? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I do have it because I did this a couple days ago obviously for the sake of time. So rather than we sit here on the 24 hour release party, I did in fact build one the other day. So I'm gonna come back up here and in all winter test, which is the one I did a couple days back, like I say, I have an extra folder here called build, which was the result of that compilation. And where does it go? Build, downloads, no. It goes build, conf, nope. Let me think again. Temp, yes, deploy. Images, LibreCC. These are all of the artifacts that got built. I can see, oh, oh boy, oh boy, we definitely want to cancel this from running in the background. <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna start. That's what it looks like though. Actually, you know what? We can let it go. It's downloading, patching, configuring every single package. There are a total of 3,833 packages that it needs to build and bundle up. Obviously, that's gonna take a while. But because I already did it, I have that file right here, resin hyphen image hyphen libre hyphen CC resin OS image that we defined at the very start of this stream in the dot coffee file. That's it. You can see it's 935 megs. So it's pretty small. Raspbian comes in at a couple of gigs. The Jetpack distro for a nano is well, like six or eight gigs, I think. Um, Kyle, only two cores. I only have two cores on the laptop. How many can I? <laughs> it's, it's only a dual core machine. <laughs> um, but uh, I already flashed it because I knew, again, that this was going to be a while and we're not going to wait and we're running out of time, four minutes to spare. And my laptop is about to die. Um, let's do this. I need to absolutely kill that before it kills my battery because I have 8% left. So let that finish its job. <laughs> Boy, that's 
It's like well, Mission Impossible, right? Yeah, yeah, it's Mission Impossible. So now switch camera, say a prayer that the battery lasts. I'm going to pause the VM just to save every last ounce of battery power. Switch the can. Actually, I need the VM for one last thing. Okay, I just put that SD card in right here. Get that in there. And that. And now we unpause the VM. Come back, come back. Okay. Uh, I need putty because I have my UART attached. You can see these wires. That's our console. USB zero is what it is attached to. One, one, five, 200. Open up putty and we'll see what happens if my laptop doesn't die on us at the very last moment. Power, we've got a light, we have something happening. We have a red LED. We've got some booting. We've now got a green LED. I see Welcome to Bellina OS flew by. Everything is still in the okay. And, uh oh, yeah, there it Whoa. is. Melina login. We made it. Root. Awesome. And we're in. That's it. We built it. Uname dash A, free dash M. One gig of memory is identified. I think if I try to zoom in. Yeah, I, Putty oh. doesn't. Uh, Can you well, control class or common class? I don't know if. No, Putty doesn't allow for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, people um, are celebrating on the chat. Just in they're case. celebrating. All right. Well, we can celebrate. Uh, what is it? Proc CPU <laughs> info. They're there. So we've got it. Awesome. Including. Lena, supervisor, is there as well. So we did it with one minute to spare. And Absolutely fantastic. Six percent on my battery. So any uh. Uh, <laughs> haters will say it's Photoshop. That's not Photoshop. Get out of here. It's not Photoshop. <laughs> so PGR. Yeah. All right. Daniel, what, what do you do when a customer says that they want, yeah, they have a, a diff, another board that, and we need to make it compatible with Valena. So what's, what's the process on customer success? Yeah, we usually want to find out whether it is obviously possible to, to support the board. And then we present customers uh, with the options. I mean, we do have a commercial service where we could actually build and maintain the operating for a fee of, or operating system for a fee as well. But some of our customers are just not yet there. They're prototyping and they're not ready to, you know, put up the budget uh, to fund a board where, you know, there's still so many things to check and so many unknowns. And, you know, the option then is actually, you know, go ahead and build the operating system and we can present it to you via the dashboard. So when you create your new applications, it will be there um, to, to download. And um, that's why we're here today. Fantastic. So there is, yeah, so actually... They have the documentation, right? That yeah. we share during the during the stream, and then now they will have this video to see, yeah. you know, yeah, an yeah, example exactly. of how to support, right? Support. Yeah, and, and one thing that I'd like to say, you know, for anyone who who tries mm -hmm. to go start going down this path, we're actually in the middle of reviewing our documentation. It was one of our customer uh, customers who pointed out to me uh, recently that um, there are a few inconsistencies in the documentation, so we're working on addressing those. And for anyone, if you if you do notice those, uh, please let us know because we do take those things seriously. We really want this process to be as easy as possible for our customers. So if you do see anything, just let us know, and we'll correct our documentation when needed. That's yeah, that's great that people perfect. Are, yeah, all right. Well, I missed all the comments. I'm trying to read back through them. 
interesting ones there. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm finally the Yakuto tutorial I've been begging David for. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> well, um, anything else, Mark? Daniel? I mean, we. I think that I've we known, did it. So, yeah, yeah, extremely. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So uh, you simply you just show in like 40 minutes how to do it. Of course, it lasts. More hours, but yeah, it's... plus a few hours. If you have a fast machine, I mean, it goes quick. Um, <laughs> you know, you can do them in an hour, and the build gets cached as you then iterate and make changes. I mean, we went through this demo. You know, obviously, like I said, I did it a couple of days ago in advance, but I, I had a few bugs I encountered along the way, and um, each cycle is much quicker. Um, the first build, yeah, it'll take a few hours, but after that, it only compiles what has changed or what your fixes are. You can clean out just individual packages that you have modified and just compile those back in. So um, the overall, it's not like one little bug and you're rebuilding multiple hours. It's just that first build. I should have clarified that. Um, after that, development is much quicker and then next question is how can you put that into valena cloud so that oh, this is uh, a second well part. that might be that might be a topic for another day it's actually very easy i'd say it's a good solid 15 to 20 minutes of work so i don't necessarily want to undertake it right now in respect no, of, of not, time but what you would do is in the boot partition of Bellina OS, there is a file by the name of config.json. That config.json is what gets parsed, or it's the key to connecting to Bellina Cloud. So what you would do is in Bellina Cloud, create your application, add a device, there's a generic device type, because obviously the Libre CC is not in the list of boards when that are in the drop down menu when you go to add a device. I mean, we literally just made it out of thin air a moment ago. Um, so you, there is one there for generic ARM uh, V7 or V8. Um, you can choose that one and it will give you a config.json fully populated, all, all, all the strings are in it. You simply take that file, mount your SD card back onto your laptop, open up the boot partition of that SD card, pop in that config JSON, eject it back out, put it into the board, bring the board back up, and the first thing it'll do is check that contents of that config.json file and authenticate then to Bellina Cloud to that to that specific app. So then you have the ability to command and control the board from anywhere. Um, it's, it's not terribly difficult. It's just a you know couple minutes worth of work. Yeah, that's that's simpler than expected. <laughs> yeah, um, and then you can push containers onto it from anywhere. And remember, there's also another way where you can actually contribute the board uh, to us as a community mm -hmm. board, and then you just submit your PR to us, and our engineers will take it, build the um, the image for you, and then when you create your application, you just end up having your image. Literally, you would choose what device, and you would say libre.cc or libre.cc, and uh, that will be your image without the need to manually then inject the config JSON. So that is also an option, and we do have a couple of community boards that we support. Actually, yep. we got one last week, right? The DG key? No, DG. Uh, what I was think it was one. I don't know what it was. I think Orange mm. Pie, is that not uh, community supported? The Orange Pies are community yeah. supported. Um, there was one last week, yes, and I can't remember which one it was. Um, but yeah, absolutely. All of the work that I just did essentially was in a Git clone, right? I could push that back up as a PR to then be included. Um, from there, our devices and OS team can add that into our uh, build system 
to uh, make it an available board in the drop down menu. Yeah. All right. What else? Daniel, something else that you want to add on, on the episode? Uh, no, nothing from me, to be honest. I'm quite happy that we managed to do it because, uh, yes, few customers actually did ask me if we, mm -hmm. if we could, and um, that's why mm -hmm. this conversation. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, putting this together and for your work, David. No problem. I was glad to do it. It was interesting and a learning experience for me as well. Uh, Mark, final comments. Do we have anything queued up for next week? Sure. So for next week, we will have the um, we will have a guest actually Ooh. who will show us with some Balena people how the ABS B uh, flight rather application works. So we have an application on Balena Hub. Well, actually, this week we have a new application uh, for pneumonia detection that we will talk maybe next week or awesome. in the next weeks. And. Mm -hmm. We, yeah, we will show how that application works. So yeah. if you want to build your own flight rather at home, you will yep. be able to do it with that application. Um, those, and I took a look in advance, those flight trackers, those ADSB receivers are not terribly expensive. I think I saw some for about under $20 US. On Amazon. Um, I don't know if they're any more or less in other parts of the world. I don't know what the price tag there is in Europe with you guys or Asia or elsewhere, but they were about 20 the US. Express. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you want to build your own radar uh, flight tracking system, uh, that's next week. Cool. It was awesome, man. It All was right. a really cool session. Yeah, that was a good one. If there are no more questions. Well, we have a, a comment from Mr. Kanchir to speed up the compilation but yeah you can test it next uh to speed the compilation use some um, other balena boards in a distributed yeah rather than just one builder get a whole fleet of them building and crunching of course cheap but effective that is true all and right you have a lot of yeah a lot of <laughs> comments yeah um it was a good one man i really enjoyed that i, I learned a lot hope that everyone learned and yep. see you next week. All right. Have a good one, guys. Mark, you want to hit Bye. the button? Sure. I will. Okay. Bye. See ya. Bye.